Almost in every house, no matter what part of the world, there is such a thing. A crappy Chinese TV box. But don't let the name TV box fool you. Inside, there is ARM mini PC just waiting to be liberated from Android. It's basically a single board computer with just 10 watts of power draw, couple of USB ports, SD card slot and even Ethernet. But can we actually use it as a computer? Can it become an alternative to Raspberry Pi if we remove Android and install Linux on it? I will answer right away. Yes, it can. But there are a lot, a lot of pitfalls. Let's see what I got today. Most of what I say about this box applies to other boxes as well. This is one of the most popular models called X96Q. But the model names for these products is just a formality because in this X96Q X96 mini cases there can be one of at least couple of dozens, if not more, different boards. They all have different Wi-Fi chips, CPUs, RAM, memory, etc. and almost all of them run some old and highly abridged version of Android. Most of them, including mine, are advertised as ones with H313 CPU, really good budget ARM CPU, and 2GB of RAM along with 16GB of storage, and when we disassemble my box we see that, oh my god, the greatest cooling solution that ever lived. Just look at this. Under this thick pad, there is a screw. Really? <sighs> okay, anyway. We have H313 CPU, right? It's, it's there, right here, right? First and very common pitfall. Fake specifications on Chinese marketplaces. Even if you see H313 written on CPU itself, like in my case, it doesn't mean it's actually H313. To check what CPU we really have, we download CPU-Z or its alternatives, because the original CPU-Z application might not be available in Play Store, and in most cases we still don't see the model of our CPU and can only guess, but this time I am lucky and we identified the CPU. What I got in this version of X96Q is Rockchip 3229. It's less powerful than the H313, but well, at least it's supported. Booting Linux on these TV boxes is a lottery by itself. Some devices allow booting directly from an SD card or USB drive, just insert it and sometimes hold the reset button inside the AV port. Others requires a lot of tinkering, special apps, drivers, this silly cable, special file and etc etc etc. There is no universal method, so sometimes even professional tinkerers need hours to make it work, and not experienced people like me just give up on this idea due to its complexity. Luckily for me, installation of Linux on this TV box was very, very easy. It booted straight from the SD card and I burned the distribution directly to the internal memory. For most TV boxes, such distribution would be called Armbian, which obviously is based on Debian. I recommend using minimal distributions, but I only recorded XFCE one, so here we go. After installing Linux, Wi-Fi stops working, it is very usual, so we either use Ethernet or we buy external USB antenna for a couple of dollars, it will also work. I type NeoFetch in the terminal and we see that it's a rock chip CPU, 1GB of RAM and 8GB of eMMC, although the seller advertised this as 2GB and 16GB of eMMC. Fake specifications again, yes, uh, by the way, if you recently bought any Android device from AliExpress or similar shop, check CPU-Z, it might show you how much RAM you actually have, if less than advertised, you can open a dispute on this matter with the seller and return some money like I did with this car stereo. Back to our sweet little single board computer. The system with graphical interface works painfully slow. I tried to make this box suffer for our joy, but I felt so sorry for it that I stopped on GIMP. It didn't work normally, my drone appeared after seconds of delay. What about browsing? Well, you see how browser works. 20 times the speed and it's still slow. And what's interesting about it is that the bottleneck is not 1GB of RAM. RAM is enough. But the CPU, CPU suffers. And uh, when I try to install some light application, we see that our temperature is 84 degrees, so there is a high chance that this machine is throttling. Unfortunately or fortunately, my 8GB of internal memory was not enough since part of it was occupied with heavy system, but on system without graphical interface everything installed smoothly and worked as intended. 
It's basically a cheap alternative to Raspberry Pi with worse supports and specs, and uh, without GPIO pins of course. I do not recommend buying one just to put Linux on it unless it's like $5, but assuming you can find such a box for free lying around your house without any purpose, give it a shot. You might grant it a second life, get a useful thing, or at least end its suffering. Thank for watching, subscribe.